high. If you're anything like me, you want to be able to move your simulator around and with the default setup, that's not really possible. So in this video, I'm going to build a platform with casters that are lockable, that I can ratchet up and down. So if I need to move it around, I can go onto the wheels and roll the platform around. Um, this is really made possible because of holes in the design legs, which was something that I requested of your, um, someone else suggested it, but I thought it was a great idea and passed it on. And that means that we can bolt the yaw in position on the platform so it won't slide around and with the addition of the locking wheels then that means that it's quite rigidly in place uh, on the floor so watch along um, i'll have all the details about all the things that i needed to purchase uh, in the show notes and in the video so here we go Given I'm in Australia, most of these links will be to an Australian website. First of all, I had to find the wood for the platform. I elected to go with 18 millimeter plywood, which should hold roughly around 400 kilos, which seemed like it was overspecked well enough. I went with the smallest piece I could get. That would be what I needed. So that's a 1200 by 800 millimeter section. And then at the store Bunnings, they will do cuts for you. So I did a cut so that I had an 800 by 700 millimeter piece, which is what I use as the basis for the platform. Ironically, I had to go to Amazon US to get the wheels that I wanted. So I got these 60F with ratchet handles. Even though America is the land of freedom units, it comes with metric bolts. Ironically, again, Bunnings, our Australian company, only had Imperial unit t-nuts so i also had to get luckily i have a friend who goes to america quite often and i got these m6 by eight millimeter t-nuts to connect the wheels to the platform and i bought two sections of 0.9 millimeter of this aluminium tubing it's an, an additional uh, fortification of the plywood which you'll see in the video i also had some leftover pieces from a previous project that i used as well flat black spray paint, some screws to screw the aluminium section into the wood, uh, two of these uh, M8 by 65 millimeter two packs to connect the design legs through the platform and through the aluminium section as well. I bought this anti-slip step, two of these just to give it a bit of, I don't know, I guess it's something that looks interesting and also means you won't fall off, I guess, when stepping up. Some of the tools I used was a set square, a router, but that's all shown in the video. So I'll describe that as we go through. So the first thing I did was get the router out and radius all of the edges so that if I ever hit it with my leg, it wouldn't really hurt. <laughs> um, got one of my boys to stand on to make sure the board didn't move. And as I was doing this, um, I did both sides of the board so that it was fully rounded, a fully rounded edge. And then as I finished this, I realized that I've still got corners on this and that could still hurt if you kick the corner by accident. So um, uh, this was after I'd sanded it to make the edges all smooth, but then I got a circular saw and cut 45 degree uh, angles off each corner, which is about the width of the plate on the bottom of the caster. And then I took it inside and just sat everything on to mark out the positions for the holes. And then back outside, I drilled the holes. So drilling a larger hole for the T-nuts to go into and then a smaller hole inside so the bolt head would go in far enough to hold the wheel tight and all of this was mostly just done by hand from the you know I drew a hole drew sorry where the hole should be when I had the brackets all sitting on there did that for all four wheels and the four holes for the design legs to connect through then uh, for the aluminium tubing I just drilled a hole through big enough that the screw would go through easily and then a, a smaller hole into the wood so that the wood wouldn't split and screw them all in. 
Um, I was careful to align the tubing so that the caster could still spin in full rotation. But all of these holes for the aluminium tubing are just by eye. So after I'd done all this, I didn't record, but um, I took the casters off using the black spray paint. I gave both sides, the top and the bottom, a, a coat of black paint. And then now you'll see inside, I've assembled it all. Um, I had to do a bit of redrilling of the design leg holes because I didn't do them straight because it was all by hand. But I'm very happy with how this all came out. Um, I stuck the watch your step stickers on after I had bolted everything else into place. Okay, so here it is in action with the, in the motors at 50% power rating. And I've only filmed the bottom of the unit because what you really want to look at is what's happening where the casters are. You can see a very slight bit of wobble on really fast rotations, but otherwise it's definitely much more rock solid and less prone to sliding than the default base. Uh, so like I'm stoked, really happy with how this has turned out.